All right, next we're gonna check reflexes, muscle stretch reflexes, sometimes called deep tendon reflexes. And there are three in the upper extremity. Uh, first, the biceps. So here we wanna, with our thumb, put it right on the biceps tendon. Patient needs to relax. And then we tap on the thumb. You wanna look at the muscle. A lot of young, healthy individuals may not have, uh, especially in the upper extremities, oftentimes, not much in terms of reflexes. It can sometimes help, uh, probably as a distracting maneuver, to ask patients to clench down with their teeth, bite down hard, and sometimes that can bring it out uh, just a little bit. Now for brachioradialis, uh, first let me just show you the brachioradialis muscle. Pull your thumb to your shoulder. So there we can see the muscle, and then here's the tendon. And we wanna be tapping on the tendon, not up here on the muscle. So relax. And so you can put two fingers here on the brachioradialis tendon, and there you can see we get a little bit of elbow flexion. And again, the key thing here is to see are they symmetrical or not. Okay. So we're getting about the same degree of elbow flexion on both sides. So those are both C5, C6 reflexes. Next, we can check triceps. This can be done a couple of different ways. Um, I prefer just to have the patient, you lift up their hand with the arm really relax, and you tap on the triceps tendon, and you can see we get some extension there. And we can do the same thing over here. The other way of checking the triceps reflex is to ask the patient just to completely let their arm relax on your hand. Here you can see the triceps tendon. And again, we get some nice elbow extension there. Triceps is uh, predominantly a C7 muscle. There's a little C6, even a little C8 in triceps, but it's most strongly C7. And then one that we don't check routinely, but it can sometimes be helpful, especially if we're looking for upper motor neuron findings, is the finger flexor reflex. And so finger flexion is a C8 T1 function. So we ask the patient to curl their fingers in and when I do that, I can feel the flexion. You can see a little flexion of the thumb. What we're looking for, if this were an upper motor neuron finding, is a spread of reflexes. So this goes up to C8, T1 of the spinal cord. And if we've got something upper motor neuron, it'll spread to larger areas. And when we tap here, we'll also get flexion of the elbow. And if we see that, that's an upper motor neuron finding. But here we just get a little bit of finger flexion. That's normal. All right, in the lower extremities, of course, we check the patella reflexes. So you really want the patient like this with the feet dangling. It's much easier to appreciate the reflex. So you can put your finger on the tendon. That's usually a very easy one to get. You know, you just want, when you're checking reflexes, just let the reflex hammer swing easily. You know, don't want to keep your wrist uh, tight. You want to have a nice swinging motion so that you're just delivering just very naturally a maximum point of impact on the tendon. And again, the key thing is to compare for uh, symmetry. All right, so that's an L2, 3, L4 reflex quadriceps muscle. And then we check for the Achilles reflex. So to do this, you wanna dorsiflex the foot just a little bit so that you can feel that plantar flexion when you tap on the tendon. Okay, so when I tap on the Achilles, I can feel the foot plantar flex, and again, nice and symmetrical. Okay, and while we're down here, we'll also check for clonus. And so I'll usually move the foot slowly back and forth a few times, and then give a quick dorsiflexion. And in a normal person, you could feel one or two beats of clonus. Okay, that's normal. Of course, Clonus looks like this. When you dorsiflex the foot, you get this sustained shaking action, but I'm doing that. He doesn't have any clonus. And one of the reflex, again, is something we'll check if we're concerned about something upper motor neuron, is to put your hand on the medial knee and tap. And usually you don't get anything or you might just get a little bit of abduction and we can compare with the other side. In an upper motor neuron situation, like a myelopathy, both knees will come together very 
briskly.